CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on October 7th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Uh, we have one member who is participating remotely this evening, so I would like to confirm that he can hear us. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And for the other members in the room and, and town staff, if you could introduce yourselves. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Diane Mahan. Leonard Diggins. Jim Feeney, town manager. Michael Cunningham, town council. Ashley Marr, board administrator. Thank you. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the select board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating, either in person or by Zoom, are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time are unsuccessful, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. There will be an opportunity for public comment at tonight's meeting during our open forum period. I will let people know when that comes up. If you are attending by Zoom and want to participate, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. And finally, because Mr. Helmuth is participating remotely this evening, each vote will be taken by roll call. We have 13 items on tonight's agenda. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done this evening. And with that, I will turn to item two, a discussion on ACMI funding. Um, John Leone, the president of ACMI, and Norm McLeod, the operations manager for ACMI. I believe Mr. Monroe might be joining them as well. If you want to... Yeah. I've been demoted. I'm not, I'm, I'm the, what did you say? The operator. Oh, is that right? What? He's off grade. He's the operator. Ah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a mistake. God. I was just reading Norm. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's a funding question. What that's can right. I um, this, I start? Yeah. Okay. Good evening. I'm John Leone. I'm the president of ACMI. I've been the board president since 2006 when we formed the corporation. As you know, we have a contract with the town or it's, we're in the process of renewing to provide town with services through um, the local cable broadcast cable companies, RCN, Verizon, and Comcast. <laughs> we get funded for a five percent fee on your cable bills. The problem that we've been, we've had ample funding through the last couple of years, but because of cable cutters, people dropping cable TV, we have lost a significant portion of our funding, over $375,000 per year. That's what brings us here tonight, myself, Norm McLeod, my executive director, no, not mine, our executive director, and Jeff Monroe, our operations manager. They have both been with us that entire time from 2006 to now as well. Um, we think we run a really good program, a really good studio. We've gotten rewards from the state and nationally for the services that we provide and the level of training that we give to our citizens of the town of Arlington. However, we cannot continue to do it. We're, um, we're asking the town and the school department to come up with $200,000 out of your combined budgets so that we can continue to operate by our contract, we're only obligated to provide coverage for the select board, the school committee, and town meeting. 
obviously we have over the years expanded that to numerous and nu numerous and other meetings and boards and committees and everything else so much so that the people of the town just assume ACMI is going to be there and we will be there and that we actually run everything that has to do with audio like these are your cameras but we run them those are your TVs but we basically run them and make everybody in town see them to the point where in town meeting this year when the audio wasn't working well people were coming up to me and asking me to get our ACMI staff to fix the audio um, we explained to them that we no longer do that that um, Town, town manager Jim Feeney had gotten a new system and his guys are running it now. Um, but that's the level that people assume ACMI does everything and we just can't do it. So I'm going to turn it over to Norm who have got a couple slides to run through and explain our, what, where we're at and what we do and why. <clears throat> this is actually the first time in uh 18 years that we've actually had to approach the town uh, for additional funding. Uh, as John had, had described, we get, do get our funding from the three cable providers. Uh, maximum uh, by, by federal law is 5%. Um, we have not had the need to uh, approach the community in any other way, whether we're whether looking for sponsorship or, or, or even donations. But we're at that point where we are at this point um, asking the town, yes, certainly. But we're also, we have uh, something called Patreon. We put a, it's, a, it's a software program we can put in front of every one of our programs, asking folks who are watching to donate. Um, and that's, that's bringing a little bit of money, but that certainly isn't going to keep us alive. Um, over the years, I've always had the philosophy, and some of my staff has heard this before, is P PFTM, and it came from a unit manager at ABC many years ago. What it means is people, facilities, time, and money. And if you're lacking one or more of those, you're, you've got a problem. So over the years, I had great staff, great people. Facilities, you know what our facilities are like at 85 Park Ave, and you know that we had expanded that to uh, Studio B over on Summer Street. Uh, great facilities. Time, we never have enough time. Who has enough time? And money, at the beginning, we did have enough time, and we only had three employees. Now, at the peak, we had 11 employees. Now we've lost the money, we've lost some, the, the, the personnel, so we're down to about six employees at this point who are trying to do the same thing that the 11 were originally doing. So when you look at that slide, for example, those are the basics. Those are the basics. Town meeting, school, select board, eight, all the way down the list. I'm sure you can read it. I, I hate reading slides when you folks can read it yourself. Um, nevertheless, Let's go a little further. I'm going to turn this over to Jeff Monroe. Jeff is the, is the operations manager, and uh, he's been with us from the start. But Jeff is on the front line. And I feel oftentimes that we, we joke about it. We have to cut Jeff into three or four different parts and have him scurrying from different, in all different directions all at the same time, trying to keep it all together is with the smaller staff that we currently have. So Jeff, so if we can change that slide. Give us a quick overview. Sure. Um, Actually, I thought you were taking this one. No, but, uh, <laughs> workshops, <laughs> workshops training. training. So basically, you know, we're, we're still providing to the best of our ability the need for training um, in 2018. Um, equipment and facilities by the community amounted to a million dollars. Of course, um, we have a master control system. So the distribution of the content that we have, we manage a server that plays all of that content and. Our staff is programming those to play three channels, 24 hours a day, and um, there's a lot of programming that happens. A lot of producers, a lot of community folks that come up with ideas and create their own shows, but then there's the coverage of all of the other programs. And uh, for instance, Robbins Library, Commission, uh, Arlington Commission for the Arts and Culture, when we some, see something that comes across that's either no, newsworthy or how can we preserve this event so that we can play it for those that cannot be there, that's where I really think ACMI has been, um, been there to do that. And that, then we have thousands of views of these programs that are played on the channels where you know, maybe there was only 100 people at the event. So it's a, it's a way for us to preserve those things that we're doing and then let them live on into the future. Um, but 
even with just with our bulletin board announcements, having a place for people to send their press releases um, back when there was lots of newspapers and other avenues. Right now, where, where are the folks? You know, we're going to play a bulletin board announcement that tells you folks about <coughs> an event that's happening throughout town. I'll um, try the next slide. The next slide. Who's running that? Yep. Who's running? <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Um, and then we're still doing the hyperlocal Arlington um, news. Even after our news director has retired, um, we're still pulling together a newscast this week. We are working together with community residents and the rest of the staff to make sure that we can put something out every week. It may be shorter, it may not be a full 30 minute newscast, but we're gonna make sure that we're putting something out every week. Um, and then training and production for our youth we had 15 students working on the local uh, football game, the first two or three games at least, um, where they're learning how to do replays and announcing the games and sideline reports. And um, so we're, I think it was five cameras. So it was a really, uh, we have the resources and we have the students right now, but as these students graduate without a youth coordinator, we're not able to build the feeder group that comes up into the high school and continues these programs. So um, it's a tough time for us right now because we don't have a feeder group at the middle school and we want to be able to continue to do these types of events. That, that what Jeff mentioned, the, the youth coordinator uh, is a very important part of our organization. And at this point, because of funding, I can't hire anybody else. And there are two part-time positions that we had. One of them was a sports coordinator who focused strictly, obviously, on sports. And then we had another production assistant, a, a half-time person. I just can't afford it. That's why we're down to six right now. So can you change the slide one more time, please? All right, just as an overview, this is the cable subscriptions, Massachusetts cable sub subscribers from 2013 to 2022. It's severe. Every other access station has this problem that we're talking about right now. And every other access station is saying it's because of streaming and people are cutting the cord. Quite understandable. As technology is changing, people want to save a few dollars, that's fine. Change the slide, please. This is a, a, an example of primetime video consumption. And you can see from 2013 through 20, well, the projection is to 2028. But the, the crossover point from people watching live TV with nonlinear, nonlinear being streaming, is it happened in summer 2022. And that's when we noticed the biggest drop in our funding. We said, what's going on here? This explains it. And if you look to the future, obviously, projected live TV is going down, 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 down. If you can change the slide one more time, please. All right. uh, this is just another piece of data to indicate what's going on in the country. The YouTube, Netflix at the bottom, Prime Video, Hulu, all of those are streaming services, and the town and no town and no access station is getting access to the funding that could be available from these folks. There was legislation in, in, uh, the, in the, the state through the summer, unfortunately didn't pass. What it would have allowed is uh, the state to charge 5% for these streaming services, and 40% would have gone to us, ACMI, 40% would have gone to you, the town, and 20% would have stayed with the state. They changed it. They wanted to give it all to the local community access stations. Well, it failed. So we're waiting for next year, and we'll see what happens at that point. But in terms of streaming, Jeff, you want to hit the next slide? Uh, sure. In more detail. What um, so I wanted to let everyone know that we are not you know, going away like cable, although we were designed at first to be distributing only to cable. Um, a number of years ago, actually through COVID, we were live streaming 24-7 all three of our channels. We continue to do that today. We've upgraded our streaming server to the new Castus unit, um, which will allow us to actually output to the app, Roku. So those folks that want to watch, that have made the change from cable to streaming, and they have Roku, they could watch us on Roku. If they have uh, YouTube TV or YouTube, they could watch some of our on-demand programming on YouTube. But um, we do have ACMI News and ACMI Sports YouTube accounts, but that only shows you what's, uh, what game is live and then the replays of those games where 
Roku will give you full access to all of ACMI programming. Um, so these are things, we have that infrastructure, we are growing as a, as a media technology uh, system to incorporate the old cable delivery system, but also the live streaming aspect. So any, just so you know, if you're supporting ACMI, you're supporting new technology and not old cable technology, because we have been upgrading our resources and services throughout uh, the last number of years. One last slide. All right, so this is why we're here. This is our ACMI budget from 2018 to, to now. Originally, we were around somehow close to about 950, 60,000 from the three providers in 2018, and it was a dramatic drop. Now we're about 680,000. So we've lost a ton of money, which means we lose, that's, that's the, the people facilities time and money. Lost the money, now is, we're losing the staff, can't, pay, can't have people uh, stepping in to cover those open slots. So it all falls on only a few production people that we have. Jeff being one of, one of the major ones, obviously, but it's unsustainable. I mean, this, this man has a family, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's only, he can only go so far. So that's why we're hearing here for the first time asking for support from you and from the school committee. Other towns have had support from their towns. Newton, I know, had, had received about 300,000 from their town. We're asking for 200,000, Newton versus Arlington. We'd love to have more than that, but it would certainly would allow us to hire more personnel to cover more events because right now it's gonna be very difficult. Jeff is talking about and very, it's terrific that we have all the volunteers who are coming in to cover sports, for example. But again, it doesn't, we can't necessarily count on those folks to cover a particular game, which means the game's not gonna go on, which means a lot of grandmothers and grandfathers are gonna be disappointed if they don't see their child playing. Same thing with commencement. We have a problem in the last year in terms of commencement. Jeff and one other production person covered it with some intern help that we have. So, Basically, we're saying we're sort of strapped. So basically, we've, our budget, we've lost 375,000 a year, which is about a third of our entire budget. <clears throat> we know that's too much to come and ask the town for, but we have developed, as Norm said, a, a Patreon, which allows people to go on and click in the upper right-hand corner of our website, we encourage you all to do it, um, and make a monthly donation for a few dollars, but that's not going to solve our problem. We've also developed and are developing a um, sponsorship. gift sponsorship, sponsorship program, program, which we've been working on for several months, that we're almost ready to roll out to get the businesses in town. But at one, two, three, four thousand dollars a whack, that's not going to cover it either. As you all know I've gotten up the last couple of years at town meeting and said this train's coming to town. Well, it's here. And we just think that we have to ask the town to do it or we're gonna have to find a new way to cover these program to cover what we want and what we believe the town folks want to as well. So we'll gladly ask any, answer any questions you have and see if we can work this out. And frankly, we've appeared before the um, school committee as well because we realize we provide a lot of services to them and that whole 200,000 in our opinion however you all can work it out should come out of both budgets um, so if you have any questions we'll be glad to answer them first of all thank thank you all for for coming and this clearly has been a problem, as, as you said, throughout uh, uh, local access cable throughout the state and throughout the country, frankly, right? Because mm -hmm. this 5% um, franchise fee for PEG, public educational and governmental use, was mandated in 1984, the Cable Communications Policy Act. And I, um, I just point that out because it's 40 years ago and that 5% hasn't changed. I think that the feeling at that time was that subscribers would continue to grow and fees would continue to grow and the 5% would, would sustain things. And, and as Mr. McLeod pointed out, there are fewer subscribers and, and I did go back and I took a look at your annual reports and, and the franchise fee from your fiscal year ending 2018 was $837,000, what you reported right. and what town meeting voted um, 
and it's an estimate, you don't know what it's gonna be until, the, I think the calculation is as of December 31 of every year, is 625,000. So it, 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 it's, it's a, a dramatic drop. I did wanna just point out for the public's benefit that the source of these fees is mandated by federal law. It's not a matter of the town or the state saying, you can increase that franchise fee and just pick up for the loss. That the, the one thing the state does do is allows the town to receive 50 cents per subscriber. That's the license fee. The state keeps 80 cents. We keep 50 cents. Um, so uh, the, the problem is there. I, I'm not going to. I have some questions, but I want to let my colleagues comment. And, and if Mr. Feeney has any comments as well, there clearly is an issue. I think the challenge here is okay, is it communities it, as a, a stopgap measure now, or is it? going to the state and looking for streaming fees or going to the federal government. And that's, that's something maybe we want to explore as, with you as we, as we go forward, because what's going to replace the cable revenues for people who are still using your services? And, and just so people know, too, that 5% appears on everybody's cable bill. So there's a peg mm. access fee, or each one might call it something different. But I know for myself, I, I go through Verizon. I did to five percent of my bill is, is comes to the town. The town designates everything to go to ACMI. Um, so I, I see the dilemma. I, I, I and we respect the, the the work you do. We appreciate all the work you do. And again, going back to your annual report from 2023, just on the governmental side, you had 283 hours of programming um, for the fiscal year ending June 30th. 2023. So the last thing I would say is my apologies to Mr. McLeod for misstating his <laughs> title. We will correct that on the uh, on the agenda, uh, the executive director of ACMI. And with that, I'll turn to my colleagues for any comments or, or questions at this point. And Mr. Diggins? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, clearly I know the value of ACMI and, and the benefits that it provides. Do you know why the legislation failed? Yeah, I, I, why, why, why it failed. failed? Why the legislation failed? I think it went back to committee. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It went back to a committee, and it was blocked by one particular representative, who basically felt, as you just mentioned, this is quote old technology. He's not going to back it. But we think there was something else behind the scenes going on that we can't prove that, of course. All right, all right. You know, because I mean, we definitely want like a, a solution, I mean, statewide, because we can't have a situation where. Wealthy communities mean are getting the support that they need, and, and the, the non-wealthy aren't. They have no bearing on our decision here. But of course, I mean, um, this really all comes down to <laughs> the town manager, you know, uh, who makes the budgets. I mean, um, and so I'm sure that you've made the appeal to him, I mean, and 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 he will determine, you know, um, what can be done. I mean, um, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I me, mean, I, mean, I would be fine with the town I me mean, supporting it. I mean, um, in, in the next override, I mean, so maybe somehow we can get you through you know, to the next override, and we put before the town I mean, um, how much they want to support ACMI, I mean, and, and, and there may be other things I mean, that are in contention, I mean, or let me say, not say contention, but other things people want, maybe a lighted bike path. I mean, um, and the town had that conversation. I mean, we put a price tag with all of these things and then say to the town, okay, we need to do an override for the basics. We will have an agenda or a purpose for the next override. And then the extras, the nice to haves, we will cost this and, and do you the town support it. Normally I would say, and I will say actually, you know, it's not gonna be a matter of how many letters we get and how many signatures we get. I mean, that's gonna determine what happens is really gonna be up to the town manager. You know, uh, uh, but if you could get people I mean, to sign letters saying like, we will support this in an override, and it was most of the voting residents, I, mean, I think that would be a nice way for us to say, okay, we can do this. You know? So my other question for you is, is so I understand that you want 200K, you know, but what would be your ideal amount? You know? It, uh, we, 200,000 was sort of an ideal amount that the board, in discussion with um, Mr. Executive Director McLeod, came upon. We will, an ideal amount would be 375,000, but we know that's not feasible. Ask for the town. Um, the, the, we have tightened our belts and our budgets a lot. Plus, out of that money, Near hundred, near one million, a couple of years ago, in the six and a quarter now, we it's also our capital budget. So, the CASTA system Jeff mentioned before mm -hmm. is a 
high-tech piece of technology that cost us about 50. Yeah, yeah. 50,000. Right. Uh, so we, we are going to have to stretch those things out beyond their normal years. This is the <coughs> second or third cast as we've had. Right. Right. So we, we, they are on a replacement schedule. We're, gonna, we're stretching those out as well. So, you know, the 200 is kind of the minimum that yeah. we ideal would be 350, 400,000, but that's not feasible. We, we realize that. We did come, and Norm and I came and spoke with um, town manager Jim Feeney last year, but it was too late in the budget cycle. And we realized that, and that's why we're getting early in the cycle now. Um, and we, we let him know up front, we didn't spring this on him. So he knew what we were um, planning on doing and getting this before the town as early as we can. Because, you know, frankly, we view cable um, broadcasting, cable casting, as well as the streaming, as an essential and not a um, nice to have thing because it's people's First Amendment rights. People's right to know what their government's doing, people's right to know what the town's doing, as well as provide um, on the entertainment um, channel as well. <clears throat> so that's sort of what our thinking is. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you. Um, certainly, Jeff knows. Longtime supporter, all the way back to pre U days, Mystic Street Continental Cable, mm -hmm. with uh, Larry Botton and my, one of my sister in laws. Um, and and uh, I recognize that you've gone before the schools. Uh, I think for this to work, um, that it would have to be a collaboration between the two, number one. Number two, um, yes, we'll, we'll turn it to, to the town manager, but also thinking moving forward, um, because the number is probably going to go up as the years go up. Um, for the town manager and town council, one of the questions I would have is um, if this is something we did do or, or are going to do, exactly what the vehicle would be to make sure that if it's something that the town can give directly to ACMI or if it has to have some sort of a pass through. And what I'm thinking about is especially around things like election coverage. I just want to make sure I know I'm thinking way out there, but um, I don't know if legally or procedurally for the board, if whatever funding comes from the town, if it's a direct or a pass-through. But I'll, I'll leave that to the manager and town council and others to, um, to, to go through that. Um, kind of a out there question, um, and if it sounds silly, then it probably is, but you know, where we're moving forward and where PEG access and, and ACMI was 100% reliant upon um, the 5% under the uh, cable agreement, and now where um, you have uh, almost double, really, through streaming, and uh, Roku and Castus? Castus is Castus. our machine. Is there, as, as other cable uh, companies, communities, boards are, are going through this and seeing the nature of your consumer is changing, so before where your consumer was 100% cable, and that's where you have to work with. Now that's not the case. Is there anything already established or is there anything available moving forward for the about 40% streaming customers that you have through Roku and Castus? And can we pursue that or is that just, no, that's out there nebulous? So yeah, the, the Castus platform is a, is a cloud service that we pay for and what we figured we would do is over the course of the next three years, invest you know, $5,000 a year this year for Roku. In the coming year, um, Amazon uh, Fire is the platform, and then year three would be Apple. Apple. <coughs> so the, the, the ability for us to do all of that at once, at, I believe it's somewhere between four and $5,000 as a setup fee, um, we figured let's try one at a time, and then over the course of the next three years, grow that, and who knows what other platforms may exist, you know, in three years. Yes, but what Those my- Those are the three major streaming yeah. platforms. But if what I my question that. is- oh, um, I think 
think I have an answer. So the legislation that didn't pass would have provided a stream of income from the streamers. Mm -hmm. We don't know if that'll pass. We don't know when it'll pass. We're not even sure if it'll be brought up. The only other stream of income that we could get from streaming, I hate to keep saying the same word, is put a paywall up. Yeah. And we're morally opposed to putting a paywall up to prevent people to come in to see our, our, broad, our product having to pay. We just don't think that's pig access. That, that defeats the purpose of what we do. It's in access. So until the legislature or the federal government or the FCC changes their rules and grants us the right to get a portion of the streaming, we don't have any ability to benefit from that. And it, your question is about delivering 40% of our, our we're, we're delivering both services at the same time. And they could either go to our website and watch the live streams. They could go to Roku as an app and watch the live streams, or they can go to uh, the TV cable channels. So th there's, right now there is a variety for folks mm. that are moving off of cable. They can still see our programming. So that, this is a great platform for us to say. You can still see our programming. Um, you just may need to call us to find out how to get to it. But our website and Roku won't be up until the holiday season, but I, I do hope to have it up. For okay. So I, I, I guess the answer to the question is it's only the legislature. Because right now, if you look at the breakdown, the 40, the 27, the 20, to add up to 100, majority are a streamer, people who are streaming and who aren't paying anything and Correct. finding Correct. out. If you're saying, <clears throat> honestly, it's up to the legislature, I really don't have a lot of, I would encourage the board to, at least in Massachusetts, to kind of come together with other cities and towns in some sort of consortium. Um, and you may have to sort of, um, I don't know if you can jump it to the federal level. Um, I'm sure Ed Markey would be more than, no, not. The alliance but, of the, there is, that's right, there, there's the alliance of community access that we do have that. There's also a Massachusetts only uh, organization and they're very uh, much on this issue. It was okay. very disappointing right. to have I'll, that. I'll leave it for you to monitor that, but you know, sometimes I know this stuff in, set in yeah. place. Sure. They, they're really not doing it until they're, they're told to do it. And just to bear in mind, just in, this year alone, you know, besides having to make up the 500,000 that we had to make up with a, the cyber hack, uh, the override, which didn't include any of um, the salary, uh, in my opinion, f f well, it didn't, but f f uh, fair wage for our, our town employees, our trash uh, contract is up. And again, that wasn't factored in. I did raise these issues as we were going through long range planning and others leading up to the override. But that number is gonna be another big, huge number. Um, uh, so uh, that the manager is, <laughs> has to deal with in his, his de is dealing with in his department head. So um, I get, I, you know, I'm sure that something will be worked out at least in the, in the, in the short term. Um, if you can continue to try to find a way, um, yes, the legislature, but um, I, Again, as Mr. Diggins was saying about getting people from Arlington, um, in order to, to really get the legislature to do, do that, you really have to, I think, beef up that consortium that already exists that, you know, I'm sure this is on a mission statement, but I don't think they're recognized, um, and I could be wrong, in, in the state house, and definitely not in the federal level, as uh, sort of the, I don't want to say lobbying agent, I don't know if that's legal to say, this consortium is a lobbying agent agent for cable access to everyone. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I feel bad for the town manager, but that's why he or she gets the big bucks. But, but also being cognizant, there's a lot of things that we have to juggle. Um, I know I just had a conversation with the manager, the manager the past week or two, right before he went to Nagaokio about a 4,700, uh, dollar item that wasn't really needed and he, he cut that out and some people may say it's only $4,783 but that's how much we're looking at the budget right now. So Mr. thank you. I don't know. Mr. Thank, thank you Mr. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. <clears throat> thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks to ACMI I am appearing on Zoom uh, with hybrid technology that is being assisted right now by ACMI. 
And uh, I think we're all, there's no lack of gratitude and appreciation for the really high quality of services that you provide to the community. Um, my colleagues have, I'll be interested to hear, hear what the chair's comments are, but you know, my colleagues before me have raised many of the same questions and issues I have. I, I would say this, that, you know, I don't know if we have money in, in the budget as, as the town manager has, has to look at that. I'm open to, to being favorable to that. I don't have a direct say in that either. Um, however, I think we will have to be very careful. I, I would advise the town manager to ask for a lot more information to make sure that whatever we, if we do anything, that it's sustainable. And I think it maybe needs to address a new set of questions if we, we're ever to, to do what, what Newton is doing. Um, and specifically around the independence and, and control and authority. I think that if ACMI becomes a vendor to the town, whether we would do this through a contract or even if we would just do this as a donation, um, that could shift expectations about ACMI's coverage priorities. Um, I think personally, as a consumer and a supporter of ACMI news, I would want the news operation to maintain its independence but since the news covers the government, I think that those are these are parts of the new conversation we would need to have is how do you protect the journalistic uh, independence? How do you protect ACMI's editorial independence to make coverage decisions and resource decisions? What, you know, once you start getting public money in the mix, that is a change for you. And um, you know, I don't think there'd be a lot of arguments. I think most of us are really happy with the coverage decisions and the resource decisions that you make. It's, it, it contributes immense value. But, uh, but I think those are things that would need to be thought through. Uh, I am also very much aware that I, I, everybody in this the conversation agrees that we need a structural fix to the 40-year-old funding level. That's, you know, and, and I think on the state level, because of the, where we're at in the legislative cycle, if it comes up again, the earliest major legislation that's reintroduced would pass would be about two years from now, you know, two years, um, July of 26, but for the, if, if past uh, history is, is, a, is a guide. Things can come out sooner, but it's probably, you know, this is a new, long, complicated conversation at the state level, if it even happens. I'm not sure the federal government's, you know, is, is any better, is perhaps worse at passing new major legislation. So, so those are some real obstacles that you know all too well. Um, but I, you know, I do think that when it comes to the idea of municipal support, we need to do that in a, in a context of sustainability. Um, and what may be shifting, th this is a crisis across the country, crisis across the state. Um, so, you know, we, we need to think carefully about about that and what a year to year investment could entail vis-a-vis -vis our budget. And the final thing I would say is it's challenging to come up with money that we weren't planning on spending. Ms. Mahan is quite correct that the trash contract is, is very likely going to be expensive. We know that we have a lot, of, a lot of costs. We have promises we made to the taxpayers in our override commitments about cost growth and, and containment. Um, however, I will say that even though ACMI, you know, I think a lot of people think that ACMI gets paid by the town to provide its coverage of public meetings and public events and sporting events, and, and it doesn't. So uh, if we think of those though as a, as a meaningful public service, largely focused on town and school, you know, town government and school programming, that those are services that none of us, and I think community doesn't want to see go away, doesn't want to see further cuts to. So, you know, if ACMI suddenly did go away, and unfortunately that's not a scenario to contemplate, but if it did, I think the town would feel a lot of correct pressure to maintain many of the same services uh, to provide access to public meetings, and a record of those meetings, and important community events that we're doing now. And so one question I think that the town manager and the finance committee yeah, need to ask themselves is, if we had to pay for this ourselves, what would that cost? Um, and you know, and, and I think about ACMI almost as a service provider in that way. So like, that raises a lot of issues, as I said earlier in my comments about you know, it is are we talking talking about ACMI becoming a vendor, or is it something else? But you know, I do think about the services that are being delivered that people have grown to rely on, expect, and value. 
Um, and I think the town does need to ask itself. It may not be the town's responsibility to, to provide any funding, but is it in the town's interest? And I don't know. And I don't know if we can afford it. I don't know how much we can afford, but I'm certainly interested in the conversation moving forward. And I'm, I'm grateful that you've come to us and uh, look forward to more information as if the conversation moves forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Yeah, and I, I got a few comments, maybe a couple of questions as well. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I think the real challenge here is as a town, we have limited resources as well. And you, you've heard about the additional expenses. And I think everybody realizes there, there is a dire funding need. And, and to me, I did Mass Access, I believe, is your industry group across mm -hmm. the state. Right. And they, um, worked really hard to, to, for that act to modernize funding for community media programming. And, and that feels like it should be the answer, but it's not going to be the answer next year for you and, or, or, or the year after, because when you, you see the percentages that people are using streaming services and they're using the same rights of way that the traditional cable companies are using, and that was the trade-off for, for the franchise fees. So you use the right of way, but you're going to collect 5%, and you're going to give it to the towns, and then the towns are going to hand it over to their community uh, cable access organizations. And, and so that, to me, is the answer. I, I think the problem I see is, okay, well, how do we get from where we are today to that point? Because to be honest with you, I, I don't see this as an annual funding mechanism for the town long term. I just I don't think it's sustainable for the town to be doing it either. I just want to be honest, just, just my view. I'm not the one who decides you're going to have to go before the finance committee. You, you'll talk to the town manager again in, 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 in town meeting. But I, I, see, I see the dire need now, but I also see a real need that we're going to need some de a fair amount of detail as to how the money will be spent as opposed to just a, a bottom line figure. I know you went to the school committee and there was some discussion, come back to the town, we'll go to the schools. I would take a look. What what is it that you have that's educational related? That you know, maybe that that's the ask of them. What would be the town ask? And and I um, I'm just really torn here because if 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 the money was available right away, I'd say let's do it. I, I think it's a real challenge. Now, one thing I do want to ask Mr. Feeney, um, in in this you know whether it's lowering your expenses or increasing revenue, you have a lease right now up at Park Ave and Mr. Feeney, when, when does that lease expire, if you know? Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is actually currently up for uh, going through an RFP process. Okay, all right. So so that's the type of thing, perhaps, and maybe I'd ask you that, again, I think looking at an RFP process for something that's valuable to the community or not for profit organization, maybe there is some flexibility there that would result in a lowering of some costs. Again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I don't know if you want to say anything on that or if you're in the middle of the process, you can't at this point, but. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Because we haven't started the process yet, you know, I would feel comfortable stating that that is actually something I had uh, mentioned to the executive director not too long ago, that something that would be uh, immediately within our grasp is potentially approaching this board and having that procurement process uh, be deemed in the public's interest uh, and with the support of this board, we could potentially go through that RFP and seek to, say, lease the building for $1 a year, which would, on the sort of the revenue side of the equation, impact the town by about $45,000, uh, which wouldn't require a commensurate budget cut on the expenditure side. So in order to include funding for ACMI, we would either need, you know, approval from really all of the elected officials who voted on an expenditure cap of three and a quarter percent for town expenses year over year, or we, we would need to lay staff off in order to provide room for that expenditure uh, in the town's budget. So I do see that being one potential short-term uh, solution that would be viable and would have no net negative impact on the town in the short term, but would provide some budgetary relief uh, on an ongoing basis moving forward for ACMI. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. And that, that feels like the time, and from where you standpoint, if it's a dollar that, that you're keeping for something else, that, that might be something that works. And, and you know, we have with our rentals, I know there are, that there will be increases 
in other rentals in town that might offset, again, not for that particular property. But that, that's the type of discussion. But I, I think, and it's not so much for us, but it's, it's for the town manager and for the finance committee and, and for us on, on a support type basis, providing more detail, just letting us know what other communities are doing. I know New, new TV is what's in Newton. They have a very big operation. I, I, some of all, I think, had proposed doing some things for local cable. I don't know if that, what ended up happening with that, but it, I think it would be helpful to get, to get that information. Um, I think it would be really helpful for, for you know, whether it's communities or, or all the local access to get together at the state level, because to me that's, that's where the answer is. Unfortunately, at the federal level, if you go back to the 1984 Act, it was proposed, Barry Goldwater was the sponsor hmm. of the legislation, was a conservative <laughs> senator from Arizona. It passed 87 to 9 in the Senate and by voice vote in the House and was signed by President Reagan a few days before the 1984 election. That was a different era, right? People working uh, mm -hmm. to, 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 together. I, I don't hold out much hope for federal legislation to, to improve this, this type of situation, but um, you know, let's, let's hope for, for, for state legislation um, on that and, and, and some real movement. Um, I think, again, just speaking for myself, I'm really sympathetic to the situation. I value ACMI, I was a former volunteer years ago for, for, for ACMI, and, and I, I hope there's a way to do something in the short term, but I think between looking for change in legislation, and, and frankly, I think you, you might have to be more creative in terms of what your fundraising efforts are too, to, tr to, to try to increase that, and fundraising is hard. It, it's, but um, I can't say it's an automatic yes at this point, but I think there's, you know, there's certainly sympathy, there's certainly you know, maybe more than sympathy, that, that a willingness to try to do something. I don't know if it's going to amount to, to 200,000, but I think it really behooves you to, to get as much detail as possible, itemize things, you'll go before the Finance Committee because you'll need their support as well. And I think you should talk to Town Council uh, as well in terms of is this even a separate warrant article item beyond the annual PEG access budget item um, just in terms of how that works. So really appreciate you coming in to, to, to speak to us. We understand the predicament that you're, you're in and we wanna try to work with you to try to get through this, but I'm not sure that we can be the, uh, you know, the full solution here. Um, yeah, Mrs. Mahan and then Mr. Diggins. And, and just very quickly, if I could just add um, that uh, the town manager obviously will have conversations with the superintendent uh, on a whole myriad of issues with your permanent town building and school uh, construction meetings coming up. But if you could, in, in a separate meeting over the phone or Zoom or whatever is most amenable, or if it's a 10, 15 minute face-to-face um, -face at another meeting that you're at, if you could just broach with, um, since the last override was really school heavy, there really was very little in there for the town, um, if you could just broach with her, um, if for some reason this can't be a 100,000, 100,000 split, that if the town's worst case scenario is the 45, um, how she could look at the 155, especially in light of the last override, really was very, very school heavy. Um, I think of the, what was it, 7.4 7 million? I forget what the last override was. But the town, seven? The town got about uh, 750,000 out of that. So that last override was all school. And I'm, I'm not trying to be mm -hmm. um, adversarial here. I, I'd love to give you 375. Um, um, but I'd also love to be able to say, you know, don't worry, we have everything planned for and uh, the uh, trash contract isn't going to be a, a six figure or perhaps seven that we just don't have the money for as well as town salary. So if you could have that, if you think it's appropriate, if it's not appropriate, um, then you can't have that conversation. But if you could have a conversation with Dr. Holman, um, you know, not a big long meeting, 10, 15 minutes to say, you know, here's the number, it's 200. Here's you know possibly 45 from us. We're really hurting with all this other stuff, um, and go from there. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you mentioned that you don't want to do it, the paywall idea. Can you discuss that a little bit more? I mean, I understand the philosophical opposition to it, but like, what amount of revenue could you raise from that? I mean, and would there be a way to apply it? I mean, to the streamers only, you know. I, we, 
have not even e e explored how much yeah. revenue we could get. And frankly, I don't think you would get much. We can't even, if we can get people in Arlington to hit the donate button and give five to seven dollars a month, which is what they were paying on their five to five percent cable fee um, before they dropped cable, um, we would we get make five six thousand yeah. a year or something from That's Patreon right. now. So even if we, I don't, we don't even want to discuss a paywall, frankly. Um, it, it's just antithetical to public access. Well, you, you have to discuss the, the, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the station that actually did that, and all hell broke loose in the town because people didn't want to pay it, quite frankly. So what the town did, I'll have to try, I'll have to find out who it was, but the town decided at that point to let's stop that, and instead they just gave them a flat sum. So it, it changes the culture. Definitely. I think it's it's about a, a community culture that we we have here in Arlington, where there's a lot of the volunteers that are creating this content understand that it's for free distribution, and it's tough to volunteer for something that you see becomes a revenue stream, and you know that doesn't come back to the volunteer. So I I think it just offers up. A, an alternate culture that we're not used to supporting. Yeah. So it's not that it's completely out of the range because there there have been ideas of some things becoming a, like a pay per view, like a special, that we could try this as a, as a one-off thing for very specific things like a fundraiser that says, this is how we're gonna try to raise funds, we'll see how it goes. We could try to do it for specific programming. The CASTA system that we purchased does offer that uh, as, a, as an item. Um, so we, we could look into it, but I, I, I think the main point is we'd like to keep the content that volunteers are creating and making that free to the public and, and being the system that is the platform for distribution um, and keeping our culture to be open and, and sharing mm -hmm. culture. With it, with a modern day town crier. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to yeah. want information. Yeah. Okay. Was no, no, no problem. No, no. So, all right, thank you. But, yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you. Yeah, um, I don't see any other members have anything. I want to thank you for coming in. I just, and I keep adding things, and sorry, this will be the last thing I, I say. But again, it, it's something that this is a problem all over the place. This is an article from back in February from someone associated with. Holbrook cable access saying streaming fees needed to save cable access channels. That's so this is a state, you know, let's look at it as a statewide problem. I also, uh, Mrs. Mahan had uh, forwarded me, um, we've been hearing from people in, in, in the community and we did receive a letter today from Jerry Tremblay, the, the president of the Dallin Art Museum, supporting um, the work of ACMI. So um, Very nice. where that came in today, I just wanted to acknowledge that. So thank you for coming in. I know you'll have a lot of work ahead of you. I'm glad you came to us at, at this time of the year. You're starting at a, at a good time and there's, there's some real challenges, but let's see what we can do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. Make sure you come to the Christmas tree lighting now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so next on our agenda, item three for approval, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on October 18th, 2024, October, uh, November 15th, December 20th at the Mill Cafe, 14 Mill Street, for Mill Cafe After Hours event. Um, is Andrew Hunter with us this evening? Okay, he was the applicant, right? Too. No, it, and he's not here in the chambers tonight. Hmm. Okay. I feel uneasy with no one here on alcohol, so I, I wouldn't. Ma I guess I'd make a motion to table. Okay, is that appropriate? Appropriate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a motion to table. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion to table has been made by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. 
Four zero vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, now moving on to the consent agenda, uh, four items. Uh, item four, minutes of meetings, August 19th, 2024 and September 9th, 2024. Item five, temporary parking request for Spooky Walk, October 26th, 2024. Item six, a request for a permit for Veterans Day Parade, Monday, November 11th, uh, by a Director of Veterans Services, Philip McGovern. Item seven, free parking in the Russell Common Lot and Railroad Lot for Small Business Saturday on November 30th, 2024. That's from the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. I do want to point out, Mr. Hurd had forwarded that along. He is not with us this evening, but uh, uh, was supporting that and added that um, as that it be added to the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll look for comments, motions. Mrs. Mahan? Move approval. I'll, I'll second, and I do have some comments, questions. Certainly. Okay, so on the spooky walk, I noticed that um, Ms. Wayton, or Wadden, I'm sorry if I'm not Martha pronouncing her name correctly, he had um, indicated that they should not you know, advertise on social media you know, because the turnout was um, larger than the 200 that they said that they would have. She said it was more like 1,000. And she said that um, they should have a police detail. And, um, and, and Officer Rateau he indicated that it was fine as long as it was like it was last year. But if I recall last year, they did not have a detail. You know, I think that they wanted a detail, but they didn't get a detail, you know? And so I just wanted to take into, make sure that, that I mean, one, that they don't do the advertising you know, and that they do have the detail because if there are indeed a thousand kids, you know, doing the spooky walk, I mean, I think we want to make sure that they are safe, you know? So that's that, you know? And on the free parking, I'm fine with that, you know? But I, 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 I think we need to take into account that one of the reasons for paying for parking is to make sure you get the turnover. I mean, it's not simply revenue, it's to make sure that, you know, that, that the spaces aren't occupied for a long period of time where people park there and they do something else, you know, uh, other than shopping. I mean, and so I don't know if we know, I mean, if uh, when we do these free parking that, you know, it does limit the ability of people, you know, who need to park, to park. But it's just something to keep in mind when we say, okay, do the free parking, because it's not simply about revenue. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Comments, questions? Okay. So on a um, motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Cunningham? Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 4 0 vote. Great. Thank you. Uh, next is a public hearing for a Comcast petition on Medford Street. And I, I should have said this at the beginning of the meeting. This will be another opportunity for public comment in addition to the open forum, public hearings for this type of thing. Uh, the public uh, does have an opportunity to comment. So if the uh, petitioner is here. Good evening, Dave Falling, Comcast, 9 Forbes Road, Woburn, Massachusetts. We'd like to speak in favor of the Comcast petition for Medford Street, starting at the Comcast manhole, excavating the place one for inch PVC conduit, 31 feet plus or minus to the, to the existing astound manhole. Thank you. And, and I believe this is related to the new construction? At, at, new uh, construction. Right now, okay. Okay. I will turn to board members for any questions? Comments? Mrs. Mahan? Move approval. Thank you. Uh, any other? Mr. Diggins? I'll, I'll second. Yeah. 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 I actually have a comment. <laughs> so, so, you do? Or? Yeah, I do have a sure. comment. And I'm actually in a good mood, all right? <laughs> so, so, but, but I just want to say on the petition, you know, there's that paragraph, the, the wherefore paragraph, I mean, that just re really needs some updating, you know, and so uh, uh, we're no longer the board of select men, you know, so when we were, I mean, the board I mean, of select men, you know, it, I mean, well, well, when we were using that term, it was men and not men, so, so and, and then, and then I'll, I mean, I might be a god in some other universe, but not this one. I mean, so, 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 uh, praying to me is just kind of weird, you know. And and also, I mean, if you are going to have pray, I mean, it's like your petition is not the entity that's doing the praying. It would be the petitioner. So, so you just need to clean up that wherefore paragraph. So mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. I mean, yep. if you bring it back and it's the same way again, I'm not going to say anything, you know, but, but I figured I'd say something tonight just so that I'm on the record of saying, let's work on it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, th thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, okay. This is a public hearing. So if, is there anybody in the chambers who wishes 
to be heard on the petition or anybody through Zoom? See no hands here. Seeing no hands raised. Okay, all right, I think we're ready for a vote uh, on a motion for approval and it's subject to uh, all conditions. Mr. Mr. Chair. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Helmuth. I, I believe Attorney Cunningham may have been trying to get your attention. I have a kind of a bird's eye view here with my uh, Zoom here. Yeah, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. I just, uh, the chair was already all over it. It's just a public hearing, and it's, the, but the public's already been afforded the opportunity if they would like to speak. <laughs> Excellent. Good, good. Safeguards in place, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmut? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 4 0 vote. Okay. Thank you. Next, item nine, uh, under appointments to the Library Board of Trustees, Lily Rao, term to expire June 30th, 2026. You want to come up? Good evening. And yeah, if you could just introduce yourself and tell us uh, why you're interested in serving on the Library Board of sure. Trustees. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am uh, moved to Arlington in May of 2022. And after living all around the country, my family has decided that this is where we're going to put down roots and stay for a while, for hopefully for the for the rest, <laughs> for the remainder of the foreseeable. And um, I love Arlington. Um, and particularly love the libraries here. Um, I have a son who entered the Arlington public school system last year. He is a first grader at Hardy and a daughter who is a little too young for that, but she can't wait uh, to go to Hardy. Um, I am an attorney, I am a writer, um, I am a big reader. Uh, we go to the library at least once a week, often more. And I'm, I'm honored and excited to be asked to serve and to help in any way I can. I'm really excited about what's going on with the Fox project and um, just happy to, happy to be here and happy to be helping out the library. Great. Well, thank you for your interest and your, and your willingness to serve. I'll turn to board members. Mr. Diggins? I'll, I'll motion approval because she said the magic words, interested in Fox, what's going on in Fox <laughs> Library. Yeah. Me too, me, so thank you. Yeah. Mrs. Mahan? Um, I'll definitely second it and, and say welcome. I'm so glad that you and your family have decided to put roots down here. Um, one of my favorite jobs was uh, in high school, I had three, but one of them was a page of the library, and I've always had a soft spot for that. Um, and I think it's back then such a vital resource, but now even more so as, as the years go by. I see that you're a writer yourself and have two novels in production, um, but one of the things, and we recently appointed a, a individual, two people, I think, to the Board of Library Trustees, and one of the things I was very encouraged by, and it sounds like, even though your daughter's too young right now, when you just have your son at Hardy, graduated from there, is that really looking to um, strengthen the collaboration between the Fox and the Robins with the youth of the town, um, not only with the public schools, but also with those who, who are homeschooled or th there are some other um, schools that ut utilize our fields and, and our libraries and, and really connecting in with them. So um, once you get on the Board of Library Trustees, you'll, if you haven't already, will certainly be brought up to speed on that. And I definitely see that as perhaps one piece of the pie that you could also really um, speak from the front lines um, with your two young children in terms of possible ways to uh, extend that outreach and really s strengthen that part of the program. And thank you for volunteering to do this. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I see no further questions. I just want to say thank you for your, your willingness to serve. Best of luck with the novels. I noticed that as well, that they're, <laughs> they're in progress, and so maybe they'll be available at the Robbins Library at, the, at some point in the future. I do uh, want to recognize our library director, Anna Litton, who's uh, with us this evening as well. So on a motion for approval uh, by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Four Congratulations. Zero. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 10 is the appointment to the Arlington Commission of Arts and Culture, Ann Thompson, for a term to expire 
June 30th, 2027. Ms. Thompson with us, I believe, by Zoom. We just note if they're under a different name to raise their hand at this time. I do not see any hand. Okay, this is a, a first time appointment, so our, our policy has been to, um, you know, unless someone comes in and, and we go too long and they have to leave, um, that, that uh, I would look for a motion to table. Move to table. Okay. Second. Okay, so a motion uh, to table by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Cunningham? Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 4-0 vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, item 11, licenses and permits. For approval, a wine and malt alcohol license, Umi Sushi LLC at 474 Massachusetts Avenue. If they, if applicants are here, come, come on up. And if you could just introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about the, uh, um, the, the, the business and the application. Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chao Chen. I'm the owner of the uh, Umi Sushi. Um, she's my uh, sister. Um, because I didn't speak English well, that's why I asked her to come in for help. Yeah, I'm Kathy Chen. I'm here to assist with the meeting. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking time uh, speaking with us about the uh, uh, liquor license application. Um, uh, Chow, Chow uh, she's the owner of the rest of Umi restaurant, and then uh, Chow is applied for liquor license to sell wine and malt uh, beverage to our customer for on-premises uh, consumption. Um, so Umi restaurant is a Japan is Japanese restaurant dedicated to provide high quality Japanese cushion to our customer, and the addition of this beverage will. Uh, complement our existing menu and enhance the experience of our customer. Um, so since opening our restaurant, we receive a, a lot of great feedback from our customers in terms of uh, providing excellent service and high quality of the Japanese cushion. Um, so um, we provide dining and takeout service. Our goal is to provide a memorable and satisfying uh, dining experience for all our customers. And uh, so, so there are like a couple key reasons that we apply for our liquor license. Chow, you want to? Uh, okay. Can I speak Chinese, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, you can try, yeah. There are two reasons I want to ask for the liquor license. The first one is the customer's experience. The customer sometimes comes to our店, they want to eat, but because of the liquor license, they leave. 走了，可能说下次有酒的时候再再来，但是我觉得这是一个很不好的给客人一个呃体验，嗯、呃，他会感觉比较，嗯、呃，就就就就是很很很失望这样子，这个餐馆没不够完善这个 menu。啊、uh, ，so 啊、uh, ，to the main the first main reason that Chow my sister say is 啊、uh, is be her customer experience。And uh, so since opening, and uh, we so we noticed that a number of client, a number of customers uh, inquiry about the availability of the of the alcoholic beverages such as a basic, very basic wine and beer, and then to complement the meals. And unfortunately, when we inform the customer that oh we not providing those beverages, they are notified. Notified, they are very kind of disappointed, and then. Um, and also, some of the some of the customer, they stay shorter time dining, or they decided not place any service and they leave without place any services. So uh, you know, overall, I think that uh, the customer in the restaurant, their experience is not quite joinable because people like to have some very basic wine and beer, mm -hmm. right? And then so that's kind of the the, the one of the key reason that we. Uh, want to apply the um, the liquor license? Okay. Yeah. The second one. Okay. Uh, the Diego is because um, regarding our business, because we we are a we are a small restaurant. Uh, we have been open for about ten months. Uh, these ten months, our business is not growing because our customers are limited. I have no way to apply this license. 酒牌可以让我的 menu 更完善
，然后希望啊、呃，希望客客服嗯、呃、会有不同的客服权，然后让我的生意会有一些增长。Um, and so she's、uh, child. The second key reason, the second like、uh, key reason is、um, as a very as a, we're very small and a relatively new restaurant since we opening since December and in less than a year and we face significant of the、uh, challenges in generating、uh, enough revenue to sustain our business and without a. Ability to serve wine, those all the basic wine and the beer, we missing out additional revenue opportunity that we、uh, that are important to us to grow,、um, and then many of our customer expect that they would stay longer, or spend more time, and they will order more if we offer wine and beer and and those wine and the beer. So、um, the addition, the those added revenue is very crucial to for us business grow.、Um, so especially in this very early stage of our business, so we,、uh, if we have the additional expand our our customer base, there will be huge help to our family business.、Sure. Okay. Now, thank 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 you for thank for you. letting us know about that, and I will、um, turn to board members for any questions or motions. I believe there's there's just three of us now for the、oh, okay. for the meeting. Sure, sure, sure.、Yeah. So, well, um, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Diggins. I, I'll make a motion to approve. Everything seems to to be in order, you know, and so it's not for me to make a business decision. I mean, but the question that comes to mind is, in a 20 seat restaurant, I mean, do you want to turn over? Do you want people to、um, to to stay longer? But that's your decision. I mean, everything's in order. So I'm happy to, you know, motion approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And this is Mahan. I'll second.、Okay. Just um, um, to Ms. Shen, congratulations. I know restaurant business is very hard,、mm -hmm. a lot of time,、yeah. <laughs> um, and I understand.、Um, my family also owns some restaurants, so I understand how hard it is、mm -hmm. to、uh, operate a restaurant and how much time you have to give to it.、Um, now, in in terms of the the wine and malt alcohol license. How will you、um, oversee? Like, how many waiters, waitresses do you have? Is anyone TIP certified, which is a state program、um, that's available、um, for businesses and their employees to take?、Um, just because the town does do,、um, we don't announce when, but yearly、um, checks on、um, all our establishments, whether it's Uh, tobacco in, in convenience stores, alcohol in package stores, in restaurants, to make sure that、um, all the proper procedures are being followed. So I'm. I just want to make sure that Ms. Chen Kuo is that how it's Kuo?、Yes, yeah. I apologize、Thank、if I didn't、you. say it right.、Um, how you see your business、um, working with this license to? Um, how many employees? How would they be trained?、Um, it, uh, you don't have to take TIP certified courses, but the ma majority do. So th those are the questions around. Just so that when we do come out, because Arlington is does do a lot of checks、um, to make sure,、um, and we don't want to have any business fail because we don't want to have it fail for the safety reason in terms of you have to follow the law, but also for your business. So I'm just wondering what Ms. Chen's knowledge, what you know about that, and how you see you overseeing this alcohol license so that there is no fails. So I think uh, so. Uh, my, oh, okay. Uh, 就是说他就是说。呃，就是说不想是说你这个，你这个呃，就是说希望说你有足够的知识去啊、呃、maintain 这个 license 这样子， okay. 然后的话，你们公司有什么人，就是说都有知识这样子，就就可以 follow 那个他们的所有的 regulation。嗯，我可以回答这个问题。OK。嗯，我我我自己在开这个餐馆之前，我有做这个嗯嗯 bartender 这个这个、经验。然后我因为是小的一个餐馆，我虽然是老板，但是我也是在外面就是服服务。我们也有嗯多一个前台，有有有前台有有服务，嗯，就可以了。Yeah, so uh, so Chow um she 
Uh, also, she has been uh, working. She has been working in the restaurant for over ten years. And then also prior to that, on the prior to the, she's become the owner of the open his own restaurant. She was a bartender for a bartender. She she knows you know uh, the the basic all the basic regulations to in terms of the serving the serving the customer uh, in terms of the uh, 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 the age license check like you know and then all this basic uh, the 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 rule and the regulation in the restaurant. She has a lot of experience. Um, with that, yeah. yeah. No, I saw that she was a bartender for two years. Uh, okay. And, um, and the <laughs> okay, other thank eight. Thank you for noticing that. The other that. eight wasn't yeah, really. Yeah, thank you for no, but um, just moving forward, yeah. um, if um, she doesn't have to do this, you don't have to do this, but contact either the planning department or the select board um, if there's any further information. It's not so much her, it's the other employees um, that also will be. Um, handling alcohol, that's usually where the fail is. And I understand everything here is in English, but if, if, if she wants, she can contact the planning department or our select board office, and we can arrange so that um, it, we have something in your native, and you know, you could speak two languages, I can only speak one. She, I'm jealous, she some right, but I don't, I'm, I'm stuck yeah. to the one, so um, just so she knows that. So it's not so much her, and I did read what her work experience was, it was two years. Yeah. Um, and I think Shen was uh, the corporation, but it's her other employees that I'm concerned about. So maybe just contact the select board's office. It's not a requirement, mm -hmm. but, and, and we can get something also in your native language. Um, and not for Ms. Shen, but for your employees. Okay. Um, or mm -hmm. for Ms. Shen to read it, and she may see the information about the TIPS program and say, you know what, I do want to do mm -hmm. that. Or I do Thank want so my much. employees yeah. to do that. Yeah. Thank so you it's so not, much. I just want to make it clear, it's not a requirement, mm -hmm. but I think it's an opportunity that's. Uh, for sh yeah. Thank you so Thank you for the purview there. Sure. there. No, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, yeah, and I, I'll support the application as well. So I, I, we have a motion by Mr. Diggins, a second by Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Helmuth is not with us, so that there'll just be three votes at, at this point. He had to leave the meeting. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Dickens? Yes. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. 3 0 vote. Okay. Congratulations and, and good luck. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much for, for, for the time. Thank you for yeah, coming in this evening. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next is open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Uh, is there anybody in the chambers who wishes to be heard during open forum? No? Uh, well, I'll sure. So I'm a volunteer at ACMI. Yeah, oh, if you could just identify yourself too. My name is Joe Snodgrass. I live uh, <clears throat> on Old Colony Road. Not Old Colony Lane, but Old Colony Road. We always, some of our mail goes there, some of our mail comes to us. Um, yeah, so I'm a volunteer at ACMI for about two years. And um, I started filming concerts around town for ACMI. And that's an interest of mine, and I feel like you know it's a service to the community. So, um, just two quick impressions, and I'll collect my comments in, in a written statement for you guys. But when I first started working at ACMI, I worked with Jeff and um, Katie Chang, and they showed me the ropes and things. And I was down there working on the computers and taking the film. But I assumed that in the upper levels of this building, there was probably you know, the IT department and the legal department and this department. I think it was only like nine people working there at the time. And now there's only six. And what they do for six people is just unbelievable to me. So that was my first impression of ACMI. The other thought that I had is they do so much for the youth um, Jasper, unfortunately, uh, is no longer with us uh, at ACMI, but uh, the respect that the students at the high school had for him, I was up in the control room with him a few times at, at the high school, is incredible in the rapport that he, he developed. 
And then I think this is part and parcel of ACMI. Um, the key thing there is this idea of imparting the idea that to be a creator as well as a consumer of culture rather than just a consumer of culture and <clears throat> content, political content, scientific content, and we get all that on, on ACMI uh, content. So that's just a couple thoughts I had on that I wanted to share. Great, Th thank you very much. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Uh, is there anybody who wishes to participate through Zoom? Seeing no hands raised. Okay, that concludes open forum. Um, next is under correspondence received. Uh, I will mention both of these. And then item 12, uh, letter open space concepts for 21 Pond Lane, uh, David Morgan, environmental planner. And item 13 is the 2024 Arlington Community Electricity Contract Launch, Talia Fox, sustainability manager. Move receipt. Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion, a, move, a motion to receive from Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Um, we are now fully in person now, so we don't have to call the roll uh, with the three members. That what you, you're probably trying to signal that to me, Attorney Cunningham. Correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. So all in favor say aye. Well, oh. actually, so, 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 so on the um, open spaces, it seems like they want some feedback from us. I, that's what's going to be my question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, so, you know, and um, it, yeah, so they, they seem to want some feedback from us. And in the beginning, it seems like, well, there was this excitement about the work that they've done, and they really wanted to, like, me kind of do something with the space. I was kind of looking for what they had me kind of settled on. I mean, certainly when I read it, I mean, I see lots of input from the community, I mean, ranging from nothing, I mean, to, mm -hmm. you know, interactive space, I mean, uh, uh, and, and so, but then at the end, it was like, well, I mean, we'd like to get your input, you know, and so I, I, I guess I'm not sure what the expectation is coming out of this meeting at this point. Sure. Uh, it, Mr. Feeney? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Diggings. And looking through the materials myself, I too didn't see uh, different concepts that you might be able to weigh in on. Yeah. So. Uh, I would be happy to circle back with Mr. Morgan to see uh, exactly what design elements or considerations uh, he was seeking input on, and I can bring that back before the board at a future time. Yeah, and, and yeah, and, and what is thinking, and that could be with Mr. Feeney, maybe with Mr. Morgan as well. Put it on for a future agenda item um, when when the time is right to seek feedback. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yes, I had the, the same question on that. What I, would be helpful for, to me is. Um, I went through, I saw about, I think about 11 different um, possibilities that were discussed. It looks like from what he says that the majority was for the secret garden and do nothing. So if he could, if he could just list, if it is up to 11, um, in terms of uh, what it is he'd like us to weigh on 11 different things. If it's less than, if it's six or eight, that's fine. But where he has had, as he notes, the two public meetings, if he could provide um, just sort of estimates in terms of, it seems like the way this is written, and maybe this isn't the case, the majority opinion was really do nothing beyond a few plantings. But I may be reading this and interpreting it incorrectly. So um, perhaps if he could weigh them, uh, six, eight, or 11 options that he'd like us to weigh in on with some sort of uh, graph or ma matrix in terms of, um, even if it's just listing with the most popular. But the way I read this memo is that the majority are saying just do really next to nothing, keep it as a secret garden with some plantings. But I have a feeling maybe that's not what um, is the case. So thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Diggins? Uh, I think Maybe you know the answer to this, mean, but is it that's all we can do? Because when when I look at it and its location, you know, we, we, I, you know, I mean, as a person who just really wants to see more housing in town, you know, see, I see that as a spot I mean, where we could do a lot. Now I know it's coming under open spaces, I mean, and, and but it is our apparently this is the select board's property, which is why we're being asked to wait in on this, I mean, and, but I see a way to maybe, you know, like, you, you keep the trees, I mean, there seems to be an empty space in the middle that we could do stuff on, and to the extent we would get an affordable housing overlay, I mean, I know that's like maybe, you know, 
a town meeting or two away. You know, I could see us doing some stuff there. I mean, that's that's really interesting. You know, so, so but if the limitation, I mean, I like to play within the box. You know, if the limitation is that it has to be open space, and what do we do in the open space? That's fine. But if we aren't contained to that, I mean, then I see some real possibilities, and then I would like our decision, you know, to take into account those possibilities so that we don't eliminate certain possibilities by what we do. Oh, so that's it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. So, so if it is what Mr. Diggins said, or if we're just limited to the $15,000 grant in this site. So but it sounds like it might be both. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank, thank you both. Because I, I, this is an interesting parcel because it's a, it's a good sized parcel. It's right next to the bike path. There, there, there was the discussion, but it feels to me, um, and I, I had interest in see, to see what came out of this, but there's still a lot of questions. Yeah. This feels like it's something that's appropriate for more discussion. Maybe we'll have Mr. Morgan up to, to uh, give us a little bit more information as well in the future. OK. okay. So on the um, both items on correspondence received, is there any comments or questions on the, um, the community electricity contract launch? Oh. OK. Um, all right. So uh, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of receipt of the two uh, pieces of correspondence, say aye. 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 OK. That's a unanimous vote. Uh, on to new business, Ms. Marr. No new business, thank you. Attorney Cunningham. No new business, Mr. Chair. Ms. Defini. No new business, Mr. Chair. Mr. Diggins. Uh, a little, just a little. I, mean, I, I usually feel a little funny, you know, when I say that the, I went to something. I don't mind what other people do, but sometimes I feel that like I'm saying it's all about me, me and what I did. But in this case, it is a little bit about me because I went to um, um, the the remembrance for um, Jane Howard, you know. Uh, yesterday, and and it was really nice. You know, uh, quite a few town meeting members uh, showed up. You know, but the reason I'm going to make it about me is that I I met Pete Howard maybe a year or so before running for the select board. He was part of a, a group that talked about mean housing. You know, and, and he was really very nice and friendly. And, but I didn't know him that well. But but then when he you know, people asked me to run, you know. I mean, I asked him, I mean, and, and he um, invited me over to his place to uh, meet with Jane, and they were just so warm and friendly and inviting and in encouraging, you know, and, and, and it meant a lot that he, they he supported uh, me and, and, um, and Ms. Howard, you know, Mrs. Howard me, made sure I knew about water bodies, you know, <laughs> and so, so, I mean, and, and it was really good to see all the people who were there who had really good uh, memories of her, too, especially her family and how well uh, she was loved being and so so I mean it's always a sad occasion when you go to these but but it was uplifting at the same time I mean and so uh, and as I said I mean I've really benefited from a lot of what she's done in town especially with respect to um, Envision Arlington which used to be Vision 2020 so so um, I feel that we were fortunate to have her you know and, and also at I me mean, Pete's doing well I mean uh, you know, I was a little bit concerned about him but he was really like in good form uh, yesterday and got nice good support network with his family and all so so overall it was um I'm glad I went and just I'll share that with you all that's it thank you thank, thank you Mr. Diggins uh, Mrs. Mahan I'm just uh, welcome back Mr. Carter Mr. Feeney and Chief Kelly from uh, their visit over at Nagaokyo. Um, that's a big commitment away from the family, uh, six plus days. Plus you were with Mr. Schlickman, but I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do appreciate and uh, th say thank you also to the chief, seriously. Um, he did uh, provide us with uh, a lot of photos as well as a videotape of the, uh, our sister city, even though we're a town, uh, Nagaokyo. Um, <laughs> in front of their fire department and the ceremony they had there and that, that definitely was appreciated. I almost felt like I was there, but I wasn't. <laughs> so uh, welcome back. I'm surprised you're here uh, running on fumes uh, considering the, I think it's two or three stop layover to get from Japan back to good old the town of Arlington. So <laughs> do appreciate you representing us um, in Chief Kelly and others. Um, so please pass that on to the chief. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan, and I, I have no new business this evening. So Move okay. to adjourn. Okay, we have a second. second. Okay, a motion has been made by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.